Hey, this is Sasha, and today I want to share with you the difference between posts versus pages when it comes to your WordPress website. Uh, it is often one of the most common questions, especially as you're getting started in building a website or an online presence with WordPress, to figure out should you use posts or should you use pages, and when should you use one versus the other. So in order to illustrate this example, I'm going to use some of the content from my own website so you get some insight about um, what the difference is between posts and pages and when to use e either one in certain situations. All right, so if we take a look here on my website on Backstage Income, uh, you can see right here at the very top, there's a navigation structure and then the page uh, goes right down there. Now, the simple way to understand or decide when to use posts or pages is that if you have content that's static or content that doesn't change as frequently, it's better to use pages. Uh, with, when it comes to pages, uh, pages don't have any authors, they're not in any specific categories, uh, there's no tagging that you can do, and they're not date-based or date-oriented. So if I go to my resources page right here at the top right, you can see this is just basically a static page where if I need to update it, I'll add another hosting platform or I'll add another uh, link right here in this area. If I want to add another um, link or a resource right here under the getting started, I can go ahead and just add another row and just update the page. That's basically all the pages are about is it's usually for static based content. Now I can go deeper into let's say more specific areas of let's say see all my gear for video equipment and you can see this is its own page again and you can see how this page is set up to be nice and wide. Uh, so that's one of the other important things to understand about pages is that you can also create custom templates or custom structures for those pages. So if I go to, let's say, books here on the top left, you can see that this page is a little bit different. The structure of it is different. It's, again, very wide, but it doesn't have that middle column like the resources. You can see this resources has this middle column with white edging. So it's a different kind of template. So comparing it to the books over here, you can see I've created a different template. And again, as I write another book, I can just pop that book right under here and add it to the list. If you go to the courses, you can see this is also another page. This is a multi-column page, so it's two columns. If I go to the newsletter here, um, again, this is just a little bit different. Again, it's kind of like the resources page, but it has different content. So you can see how this is a lot different. Um, there's also categories that I've created. So if I go to authors um, and uh, writers right here, actually in the training section, if I go in the training section, you can see how this page is completely different. It has, again, uh, these kinds of uh, little cards that if you click these cards, and let's say I go to book covers and design, and I hit view course. So now, as you go into this, you can see there's a few little posts or articles that people can click and, and watch this little mini couple of video series that I have right there. So those are pages, but you can see that if I click these uh, pages or I look at, let's say, resource, there's no, um, there's no person or author that says, hey, I wrote this, there's no specific date to them, uh, but they can have their own templates. If you go to the blog, which is typically the uh, posts, in here you can see they're structured and they have their own date. So like this one was published January 25th, 2017. And if I click through this, uh, you can see that it'll also have uh, the author right there. Now, you can also include tags. I've, I've decided to hide tags in here. You can also put them inside a category, which you can see there's categories right here. So if I go ahead and let's say click uh, basics of building a blog business on the right, and when I click this, you can see it'll list all of the base building a blog business um, uh, posts. And in these posts, you'll see that the structure is the same, meaning the template is the same, that they're all set up this way where there's a left side and then there's like a little right column right there on the right for the navigation. But as you scroll down, they're all structured the same. And then as you click through into any one of them, whether you're clicking into this one that was published in 2015, 
the structure is the same where they have the content there on the left. They have that little navigation on the right. So you, it's kind of a two column. But as you scroll down, you kind of get into that, that area. And if you go to another one, let's just say it's, it's again the same thing where you have, let's, let's click this one, why most internet bloggers fail and never make any money. When you click this one, again, it's the same thing. It's a double column and on the left side is where most of your content is right there. So they're set up in the same manner to the point where you, know, you, you don't have a different kind of template. And as you go into editing some of these things, and I'll just show you the back end here. When I go into posts and I see all the posts, you can see here I can schedule these posts, right? So I can schedule them and to go out. So you'll see that I have some things that are scheduled really far out. There's a lot of posts that are scheduled. Um, you can also do the categories over here. So if I look at the categories, here's the categories of where I can add those posts to. Whereas if I go into pages right here and you just click pages, you can see the settings there's not as many settings. Now I have a little plug in here to manage my pages a little bit better. But when I go into this, you know, there's no specific way to categorize these besides it's just a page, right? So here's slash podcast, uh, the podcast page. I could do status, either published, pending review or so forth. But there's no real scheduled date right there. I guess I could move that date forward. Uh, but most of the time, these are just static pages. Um, they're not scheduled into that future uh, date to where you have things coming out time and time again. Once they're up, they're up and running, and then you might do some tweaks and changes to those. There's a few settings you could do within pages, um, and you can do that right within the settings. But um, again, there's not a ton of um, ton of settings or tons of options, whereas with Post, there's more options as far as postings go, but you can't do a custom template for them. So there's a trade off. So to simplify things, which one should you use? Well, if you have content that's constantly being updated in the sense of your posting frequency and you're posting, let's say this week, then next week, then another week, it's good to set up categories and create posts because that content is constantly coming up and uh, moving forward. If you're setting up static pages that don't change that frequently, it's best to stick to pages because that content is there. There's no author that's related to it. You're not having contributors. Whereas with posts, you can have multiple authors. You can put them in categories. So there's more flexibility in that way. So again, content that's you're constantly adding more content to a certain category. Let's just say recipes and we're doing barbecue recipes then you go ahead and create posts because every week you come out with a new barbecue recipe. But if you're looking to just create a list of barbecues or a list of barbecue tools, then it might be good to create a page if that page is very relevant and very important. I would say pages are the ones that are in the navigation menu. They're usually more important or more relevant, whereas posts are things that just constantly keep adding to and are posted more frequently. So a little final insight here from my other website, which is tradersfly.com. You can see here I have a recent charts posted, which are basically posts. So if we go to the blog posts or all the posts, you can see that right here as you scroll down, there's a lot of different content um, and all the content is structured in the same manner. There's a basically a posting or a listing. And then as you click through and go into it deeper, that's where more of the content starts to come alive. So if we go ahead and scroll up to the top, you can see that there's some pages here at the top and these mostly are pages. So if I go again to the book section, you can see there's some uh, books right there that are listed and you can see this has a different layout than if let's just say you go to the resources page. Again, this one looks a little bit different because it's the resources page. If you go to, let's say, the FAQ pages, you can also go into, let's say, the live classes. And again, you can see this page is just slightly different. So the design elements of it is a little more friendly in the way of um, structuring pages to making them look a little bit differently. Whereas if you just go to all the blog posts, and just look at the posts. They're basically the same way time and time again. There's basically a post, 
Uh, you know, you can you can make it with a little thumbnail on the side. That's totally up to you, but they would be the same template time and time again with the postings. And then you go ahead and you can go to, you know, the other pages and scroll through pages. And these are just postings because they are uh, chronologically based. Usually the postings are reverse chronological based. So the newest would be at the very top. So if you take a look here, and we scroll through some of these things and let's just say we click through on uh, one of these episodes, call it episode number 109. You can go ahead, click through and it would be done in the same way. So there's your post, there's your author. You can even have these popular tags right there, which is very handy, especially in stock trading because you could target Facebook, Amazon, Google, uh, Goldman Sachs, Priceline, Tesla, Wynn, Netflix. So again, that's very handy and you have different categories for training and education. So that's kind of the way I've done it um, as far as this website is concerned. So I hope that gives you some insight to posts versus pages. So keep in mind, posts are usually more for date based or content that's constantly evolving and you're creating content, uh, let's say every week or every month. So it's time based content. Uh, it doesn't mean that the content has to be old or time sensitive. It just means that you're creating content uh, periodically or frequently. Now the templates, you can't really change. It's just a structure. That's just the way it is. You can modify your original template, meaning you can create your custom post template if you want, meaning some people have a featured image, a little uh, summary right there, a headline, put the date, put the author there. That's totally up to you. But once that's set, you really can't change it too much beyond that because all of the rest of them would go the same way. Whereas with pages, they're more static content. Once you create those pages, you might make a little update here or there, but they're usually more important or relevant. And then they stay on there on your website. Let's just say maybe at the top in the navigation bar. And if you add or tweak to it, that's okay, but it's not a brand new post that you would go ahead and create or add. You would usually just make updates to those pages. But the good news with pages is that you can have a custom template for them. So it allows you to really structure that content specifically for your audience based on the information that you have to present. So thanks for joining me in this video. I hope you really found it helpful. If you did and you want to continue watching other training videos, then go ahead and continue watching this WordPress little tutorial course. And if you want to sign up to my newsletter list where I share some exclusive content as well as join me in a live webinar class, click the button right here. When you click that button, enter your name and the email address and be sure to get on my newsletter list. And that's where I share with you how to sign up, register for free live classes, as well as some exclusive training videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.